I'm Dan and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for more than 40 years. I'm gonna test some portable gadgets and see if I can find a way to make them better. You wanna look like that a little more? Give it something that you'd be able to push against. Maybe a handle and two rollers. These are the gadgets I am going to test. Heinz Ketchup Packet Squeezer, Crunch Cup, Portable Bag Slicer and Resealer, Dory Kit, Pocket Size Cutlery and Chopsticks. Heinz Ketchup Packet Squeezer. Its purpose in life is to squeeze every drop of ketchup out of a packet. It is also a cute keychain. Let's see how effective it is. Now, I need a packet. So I've got a ketchup packet here and I've got a portion of the device, the gadget, where I'm gonna stick this in, pull it across, and hopefully it's gonna cut that corner open. And it did, although I spilled a bit. Now my next step is to start feeding this in and I'm gonna have to line this up with a slot. I'm gonna start to roll. I've got some ketchup on my hand, but let's see how we do with getting the ketchup out. Go, 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 go. Now, of course, when I'm at the very end, I'm gonna get some ketchup into the gadget and I do have a bit of cleanup to go, and I have squeezed out ketchup into the bowl on my fingers and onto the gadget. Let's try that again. This time I'm gonna line things up so it goes a little more smoothly. This time I'm gonna try cutting the entire top off. Let's see if that works. Um, no, it doesn't work, because really this only fits the corner. So I guess it's designed to cut the corner. Now I am going to insert this into the slot. Okay, second time around, it was a lot cleaner. Tastes like ketchup. Let's see if these hands can catch up to the packet squeezer. So let's give this an effectiveness rating. I'm not gonna go very high. I mean, I guess in terms of effectiveness, it did squeeze out the ketchup, but it took a little bit of work. It was a little bit wasteful. I think in effectiveness, I'm gonna go right down the middle. I'm gonna give it three out of five. I don't think we need a left-handed oil test because as you saw, I was using both hands to do this and there's not a lot of force in doing this, but there is a bit of accuracy that's needed. That said, I'm not sure I'm gonna learn anything by oiling up or making my non-dominant hand slippery and trying it again. Let's talk about usability. I thought this was way too fussy. As I pulled this open, it was a little sloppy. I was getting some ketchup already on my hands when I'm slicing this. And the other usability issue is that in order to get the packet to align with the roller, I've got to look really closely and see when this gap is really visible and it's not easy to see at all. So usability, two out of five. It's got its curiosity aspect to it. And honestly, I was looking forward to trying this. Let's talk about a redesign and I'm Kind of curious to see what I'm gonna to have to say about this. So one thing that would be relatively easy is I would make this inner roller a different color so that it's really, really visible when you have this in the right position to insert the back end of the packet. So even though the roller's on the inside, it is round and circling here. I would even put an indicator here that would make it really, really obvious that the slot is aligned and it's time to insert the packet. There's no reason for this little slot arrow where you actually start the packet to be so small, I think I would enlarge that and maybe even change the three-dimensional shape of this so that it slides in more easily by itself. I'd also do something to make this a little more finger-friendly so that this piece will pop out more easily so that you can clean it. If you really need to get all that ketchup out of your packet, I think I would make something that probably has maybe a handle and two rollers so that you're pulling it through like an old washing machine and it would be a much more simple device. It's not that difficult to tear open the corner of the packet. I would just make two rollers that are kind of passive rollers and feed them in and pull it across. In terms of washing this or cleaning it, everything is hidden in here. Honestly, I would rethink this thing significantly. Now, I don't think this is necessary. I'm not giving it any better than a one. It's kind of cute. It has its amusement factor if you use it once, but I don't think you use it more than once. Crunch cup. This is the crunch cup. Its purpose in life is to allow you to eat cereal on the go without the need of a bowl or spoon. This is probably designed for people who can't decide what goes in the bowl first, the cereal or the milk. Let's see how effective it is. So let me explain how it works. Cereal goes in here, milk goes in here. It's actually two parts here to the cap. If you look very closely, there's a fill line on here. Let's screw that piece on, stick this in. I'm gonna trust the line. I think we're ready to walk around the house and have Fruit Loops. 
Hmm. My milk to Fruit Loops proportion isn't quite right. I'm gonna try my technique and I may have to actually block some of the milk pouring out until I get enough Fruit Loops into my mouth. So let's give that a try. I don't know how it looks, but it doesn't feel that graceful. I'm noticing I really have to open my mouth wide to get any Fruit Loops in there and also do some tongue blockage on this little spout here that's gonna release the milk. It's not giving me an immediately great first impression. It's also curious, I think, that it doesn't really cover up the top. So in a way it's portable, but you have to be careful. You have to walk around like you're walking around with an, basically an open cup. And I'm not actually sure I would want to walk down the street with this. Let's compare the Crunch Cup with putting your milk and cereal in a more standard travel tumbler. Stand back. Surprising to me, that actually worked better. What you could also do is do that and bring a spoon. And I guess that would really be my choice. Let's give it an effectiveness rating. I've got to go not high on this one because I think it is very odd to have an open container that's not really portable, or at least if it's portable, you've got to be careful you don't spill it. Uh, without the aid of a top, I think this is not as portable as I would expect. Effectiveness, two out of five. I don't really think you'll be walking around very far with it. I don't think it makes sense to challenge myself lefty or righty or you know, make my left hand slippery because there's no real force involved here. So in terms of usability, it's just too difficult to get the right ratio of milk, which means the milk may pour in your mouth or you've got to block that little spout with your tongue. Just didn't want to work as well as you may think. And I can't go much better than a two out of five. Let's talk about a redesign. One of the issues I'm finding is that the cereal is not pouring out as well as it should. I would wonder if this inner surface, this inner part would want to be instead of a straight cylinder, if this would actually want to be a cone, but you really have to tilt this far up to get cereal to pour out. So if you really want to keep the milk and cereal separate, I would try angling this, which means that when it tilts, the cereal is going to flow more freely. And then, well, I would rethink the shape of the spout because I really had to open my mouth wide to catch all that cereal coming in. So I would make this more of a spout, but what I would certainly do is give this some sort of lid that would actually allow you to walk around with this without spilling it. And I think that lid just needs to seal off this little seal here where the milk comes out. And the rest of it, I think, is pretty easy to contain. So I would make this a really a lot more portable. So let's talk about a buy rating. For the life of me, I can't figure out why they did not create a cover for this, some sort of cap or lid. I don't think I can recommend the Crunch Cup to too many people. I think it's a lot of plastic that can be better served in other ways. So I would give this a one out of five. You'll thank me later. Portable bag slicer and resealer. So in front of me is the portable bag slicer and resealer. It promises to help you open your snack bags and then reseal them. Let's see how effective it is. So I've got a bag of chips and I'll explain to you what's going on here. There is a slide switch here that's going to expose a knife. That seems a little dangerous the way they do it here. It is battery operated and it looks to me like what happens here is something slides this way. And I believe once these contacts are made, it's gonna apply some heat to reseal the bag. I'm gonna expose this enough so that the heat unit is exposed. And there's a little click here. And because I know I'm gonna be resealing this, I'm going to try to slice it open pretty carefully. And let me make sure that's open. Yep. And open. Let's assume I'm only eating one chip. That never happens. I think what I'm gonna do is pull this in and let's see if I go across what's gonna happen. So uh, I can feel this a little warm. It applied some heat and it has reconnected the open path here. I unfortunately am no longer able to get a chip, but it definitely resealed. Who would have thought? Let's try this again with a tiny bag of Lay's chips. I'm going to carefully slice the bag open. Eat this chip. So let's try that. And I went pretty quickly there. And let's go quickly in the other direction. But you know what happened? That time I lingered a little bit and I burned through the bag. Now, instead of the battery powered version of bag sealing, I'm gonna double this over and use a spring clip. 
Personally, I think I would go with the clips. Folding the bag over two or three times, I think it's gonna seal it without any problem. So let's talk about an effectiveness rating. I can't fault it too much there. I think in terms of sealing the bag, again, it takes a couple of tries to get your technique down, but I would give that four out of five. It's not that it didn't work. It definitely resealed the bag. Lefty or righty, I don't think I need to do a left-handed oil test. I think it actually has some faults with either hand. So let's talk about usability. There are a, like enough faults on this that I don't think is very usable. So for instance, sliding this piece to expose the heating element, uh, it's supposed to snap into place, but it's not easy to slide. There's nothing here really you can push against. It's not that well designed. Also, in terms of uh, identifying itself, it doesn't anywhere identify itself what it is or what it could possibly be used for, which is important if you have this sitting around the house or in the drawer. And also I think usability of this blade is just all wrong. And uh, the fact that it actually is not that easy to push with your thumb and, and pull it out. So you may get the idea that I'm not gonna give it a very high usability rating. I'm gonna give it a two out of five. So let's talk about a redesign. In a redesign, one of the first things I would do is do something different about this razor blade button. First of all, it's not really meant to slide easily because there's just a little bit of texture here and you're pushing that way. It springs back. So there's really no reason to be able to pull it back. But if there was some way to interlock it so you cannot slide it open accidentally, if there was some second action that you could do, that would be something that I'd work into it. I would put a shape in there that would allow your finger to easily push that way. In terms of locking it, there are a number of ways you can do that. It could be a second action, it could be a second piece here, it could be a press and lock thing. The other thing I would watch is this piece, this battery piece that is meant to slide, needs to be pushed open. So this part clicks open and this can push open, but there's nothing here really to push against. So I would give this either some sort of curvature shape so you have something to grab against as you push it back and forth. Or you can do that same thing from this direction. Give it something here that you'd be able to push against. And if it was a shape like this, you'd be able to push this way and close it up that way. One other thing I would look at is whether or not there's more of a visual indication of where the edge of the bag may want to sit. So I would think that maybe along the top here, there'd be some graphic that would tell you or give you an indication of how far you really should go to seal up the bag. And so if there was a indication there, the bag would be able to sit like that. And the heating element would be far enough in so that you're not falling off the edge of the bag. So for a buy rating, I'm giving it a one out of five. I know I gave it higher ratings for effectiveness because it is effective. It does airtightly seal a bag. I just don't know if you need it. This does not exactly have my seal of approval. Ori kit. This in front of me is the Ori kit. This gadget claims to use the art of origami to transform itself into six different kitchen tools. Let's check its effectiveness. I have a pan of scrambled eggs here. So the tools it comes with is a tiny spoon, which needs to be held together. This is a slightly larger spoon, and when it comes together, there's a magnet, although the magnet is a little uh, weak to hold it together. Here's a larger spoon, same thought. The magnet holds it together. Here is a spatula that we're gonna use for the eggs. It's got two magnets that should hold itself together. This one is a strainer, and this last one is a larger scoop. So what I'm gonna use is the spatula version. Seems a little floppy, but let's try it. And I'm not sure it's gonna scrape, but it will work like a shovel to get the eggs onto the plate. Can I now use one of these to eat? I will try the, maybe I'll try the smaller size one and take a bite. It's not like they don't work. Let's compare the utensils in the Ori kit to their actual utensil counterparts. No problem there. It seems uh, a little more secure. I'm just a little less likely to drop it off the spoon, but these certainly work. Let's give it an effectiveness rating. We didn't do any like tough work with it, like scraping the pan, and I don't think it's up to that. I'm also a little concerned that once I magnet these together, they flop open. If I was really going somewhere on a camping trip or something, I'm not sure I would want to have my dinner or lunch depend on these. 
I think there may be some better options for you out there. So I will say they worked better than I expected, but I, I did not have high expectations. So in terms of effectiveness, I would give this no more than a two out of five. I don't think I need to uh, test myself with my left hand on these because they are what they are. They're really passive devices. For usability, also not really high. I think it worked again with the uh, task I was gonna do. If it's gonna be something soft and something that these floppy silicone things can handle, then maybe it's okay. Maybe this has some advantages because it is, they are so portable. They don't take any three-dimensional space. They do fold flat. You may not even need to carry all six of them depending on what you're doing. Again, I wouldn't trust the camping trip with these. So I would give them no better than a two out of five. Let's talk about a redesign. And I'm gonna use the spatula as an example of some thoughts. Because this one it really would take the most force if you're really gonna to try to cook with it, not do this with it. So first of all, an easy thing to do would be to use stronger magnets. So I would look at ways to incorporate some stronger magnets in here. So I would increase that so that they hold together. Uh, it may also be possible to make the silicone a little bit thinner so that they would, the magnetic force would be a little stronger against each other. But in either case, I would strengthen these magnets. Uh, this becomes a little floppy right here because this is also a folding point. So the point at which it folds, that needs to be thin enough to bend. But when it comes into just two dimensions like this, it's gonna do this naturally. So I don't have an instant solution for that. The other thing I would consider, again, if I was gonna scrape something, I would think about incorporating either a edge on this, adding a harder piece of plastic here to the edge, or possibly making this entire piece, overlaying the silicone with a hard piece of plastic so you actually have a scoop that you could push on and that won't flop, flop up this way. Given the constraints or the fact that these are designed to be things that fold flat like this and it's using the silicone to do it, I think they could use some help to be more effective and more promising. As they are, they kind of fall flat. So let's talk about a buy rating. I'm trying to find a need for people to have this. And if you really, really need utensils that fold flat, this could be for you, at least it could be a partial solution. But I think these need to be improved before I can actually recommend them. So I'm gonna give it a generous two out of five. Auricit, you're designed to travel. Have a nice trip. Bye bye. Pocket-sized cutlery and chopsticks. In front of me is the pocket-sized reusable cutlery and chopsticks. This kit contains collapsible utensils and chopsticks and comes in this handy little metal case. Okay, so let's sort out what we have. So the knife, the fork, and the spoon are easy to identify. Now I've got a couple of closely related shapes here. There are a couple of grooves on this, which I am going to pretty well assume are the chopsticks I am going to assemble by screwing in chopsticks first. Knife, fork, spoon. I have in front of me a bowl of noodles and what I'm gonna do is see how I can do with the chopsticks, but uh, they are usable and they are chopsticks and that would work and I could shove this into my mouth. Let's try the fork. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but spinning a fork when you have a very round silvery handle is not that easy. There's nothing really to grab on as you're spinning. You just have to squeeze a little harder. I think there's a compromise in terms of usability of the utensils that you end up with because the diameters of all of these are rather small and completely round. Not the easiest to use utensils. It sure beats a plastic knife. So that is working. I think the real question comes down to is how portable are these once they are folded up and supposedly portable as opposed to how portable would a knife, fork, spoon, and chopsticks be Anyway, in terms of working, I think they work. In terms of the effort to put them together, I think a sleeve would actually save some space. Let's compare those with their full size and solid counterparts. I do see a difference in terms of usability that given the choice, I would prefer to use these. Let's talk about effectiveness. And for effectiveness, what I want to look at is how much space are we actually saving? If this is just about the size and shape and volume 
of the already assembled utensils or even utensils you already have in your house. And this is the portable size. I don't see a major advantage. It's gonna take some time. I don't think it's worthwhile. I'm gonna give it a one out of five. So it's time for the left-handed oil test. And what this does is it highlights any deficiencies in design. I'm gonna be using my left hand slippery. I'm right-handed. I don't know if I can even use chopsticks left-handed. What I suspect is because this is completely round, I'm gonna have trouble spinning this. See, I've got no action there at all. If I compare this with a standard fork, I can spin this one. If spinning was a thing you wanna do with a fork, I am out of luck trying to spin this fork. So I would consider that in the design of cutlery, and I'm not sure what we're really gaining in terms of making these collapsible or round or portable. Same will certainly be true with the chopsticks, although you don't spin chopsticks, but I don't know if, if I'm gonna be able to use any chopsticks lefty, but I do feel that these, these are just a little bit squarish on the ends. These are just a little bit more stable in my hands. The other thing I'll try is how difficult it is to either tighten or loosen these. I'm gonna to try to break this down and I can do that if I squeeze hard, I can get some friction on these. It's kind of slippery, go in the other direction. I'm not gonna be able to tighten them very much. So let's talk about usability. I just don't think you're gonna to wanna to grab these in place of things that you already own. So let's give it a one out of five. Sorry guys. So let's talk about a redesign. And again, I'm not that thrilled about disassembling these or screwing these apart. I'm wondering if instead of a screw mechanism and having these handles so small, I think I would look for something, look a way to design this with a more substantial handle, not completely round, either squarish or oval in shape and a little bit wider, maybe even flatter, and look for a way that these can snap together this way. Probably what that means is some sort of release button here or something that would help them snap together and release when needed. But again, I don't see anywhere that I'm saving volume in doing this, but that's what my suggestion would be for a redesign. For the design of the case, I would just make this an envelope. Let's say it'd be half the size of a chopstick, probably gonna have a flap and probably a snap, and this will fold over to the snap here, and this would contain the utensils. So I think a soft case would make a lot more sense. With this redesign, case closed. So let's talk about a buy rating. One of the goals in the manufacturers or designers creating this was to be more sustainable so that you're not using disposable utensils. So at the same time, give them a little bit of weight so that they have a little more quality feel to them. Those goals are all fine and good, but you can do that by grabbing the knives and forks you already have and just wrapping them in a napkin or finding some sort of envelope or container that you can slip them into and traveling with them, taking them with you that way. But for most of the world, not an elegant solution. One out of five. So typically on well-equipped, we choose gadgets that we are a little skeptical about. Very often what we're looking for is some happy surprises like, wow, that worked better than I thought. Not today. Today, I've got a range here of disappointments and we just have to be honest about these. Ultimately, what we learned in this episode that none of these gadgets are worth replacing the things that you may already have in your kitchen.